Great. So today is the Feast of Christ the King. And what's very interesting is that the readings for today, Christ the King, uh, might not be exactly what we expect. So it says uh, from the prophet, in the reading uh, from the prophet Ezekiel this morning, we'd be expecting maybe the readings for Christ the King to talk about the Lord's glory and power and majesty and might and and so on and so forth. Whereas, no, the uh, first reading is the Lord says this, I'm going to look after my flock, myself, and keep it all in view as a shepherd keeps all of his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep. So shall I keep my sheep in view. So the Lord is king of the universe and the first reading is about him being a shepherd about him taking care of sheep, taking the risk upon himself to defend the lives of these little creatures, you know, pulling them back into order, dipping them, defending them against evil, all this kind of thing. That, 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 that. This, is, this is the Lord's kingship. It's not a kingship of, of dominion and lightning bolts and this kind of thing. It's, it's, much more, it's much more almost tangible. It's much more loving, okay? It's not a kingdom of dominion or a kingdom of, of, of looking down upon us, his mere creatures. The gospel is very interesting because it's the kind of a summary of this series that we've been doing for the last four days. So we've been doing a series on uh, the essentials of our faith. Okay? So on day one, we basically outlined th- this, this gospel, right? Day one, we mentioned that salvation, heaven, We can't take it for granted. We should never take it for granted. Why? Because as Jesus himself says, remember, these aren't my words. None of these are my words. As Jesus himself says, like, a day comes when the sheep are separated from the goats. Right? Those who follow the Lord from those who don't, those who do will come to the Lord, and those who don't will not. Again, not my words, Jesus's. So heaven, we we should never, ever presume heaven. Very, very dangerous presumption, because what if you are wrong? Okay, so we should never presume heaven. So we have to work for it. But then day two, we have to quickly get into something a little more positive. Uh, we have a guide in this voyage, in this journey, this spiritual uh, progress that we would hope to be making. We have a guide in it all, and that is Our Lady. Okay, so we hope, we pray that uh, in, in our scaling this mountain, we have a guide. We have someone who knows what they're doing. That's Our Lady. Okay, to make sure we stay on the straight and narrow, to make sure we stay close to the Lord. We've also, we're also consecrating ourselves to Our Lady now on the <clears throat> Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe. So we're in day 10-ish, 14, uh, of our consecration to Our Lady. Uh, so this is something that we take very seriously. Day three, then yesterday, we focused on... <laughs> this is something that we focus... Something that's very important to us. Also, that we focus on divine intimacy, right? That our faith isn't just about adhering to rules because one can adhere to rules but because you're forced to you can adhere to rules kind of against your will and just uh, we have to this kind of uh, rather than saying Lord I love you and I have a relationship with you and I know you and as we mentioned yesterday as well the uh, definition that the Lord himself gives of eternal life Father this is eternal life that they may know you that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the, whom you have sent. So knowledge of God, but <clears throat> again, not just knowledge that God exists, but knowledge of God's heart, who he is and how he is, what he wants for us. This, this is what gets us to heaven. Okay? So these are really, really important things from the mouth of, of the Lord himself. Okay, so today uh, I just want to focus on, on two little things, if I may. So one is uh, that in this spiritual journey, if we're to reduce our faith to some essentials, one point which we really cannot get around is the fact that each one of us is called to sanctity. Sanctity. Remember, again, we shouldn't aim low, because if you aim low and miss, you might miss the target altogether. If you aim high and miss, at least you'd hit the target. Okay? Uh, so if, we, if we're aiming for just to kind of do the bare minimum that God asks, you know, maybe I'll, 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 I'll do some devotion and just kind of do the minimum, just go to Mass because that's the minimum uh, and never aim a little higher I may find myself falling, falling short of the mark so it's better for us to aim high okay? aim for sanctity don't aim for purgatory <laughs> aim for sanctity aim for sanctity 
which requires uh, require, requires effort. We played a game, or should I say, the young people here, uh, here played a game recently of a version of hide and seek, basically. And one of our young people was so dedicated that she decided to hide in a recycle bin. Now we have the, the big recycle bins, the ones that you see outside shops. Uh, we have one of those here. She, saw, she hid in that recycle bin. We had tuna that day. <laughs> so there would have been tuna, cans, milk containers from up to a week ago, uh, all sorts of manky rubbish in there. And she hid in the bin for 45 minutes <laughs> until she was discovered by a person who was about to throw something into the bin. Uh, that is dedication. And that's the kind of dedication one has to have in order to become a saint. You don't become a saint by accident. You have to want it. I want to win. <laughs> I'm going to win this, and I'm going to, you know, whatever, whatever it costs, whatever it takes, whatever hits I have to take, I'm going to take them because I want to be a saint. I want to win this game. You know? So wh when it comes to sanctity as well, it's not about aiming low and just doing the bare minimum, but aiming high and doing whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Something we focused on again yesterday. Cutting ties with sin. And not even cutting ties with sin, but cutting ties even with the thought of sin. Cutting ties with the pleasure of the thought of sinning. To cut it off even at the level of thought, even before it becomes an action. You know, to cut it off there. Let, 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 let these temptations not take root in any way, shape or form in my heart. I don't even want the thought of it. Lord, I want my heart to belong to you alone. I want to live in this divine intimacy with you. Okay, so sanctity is something we must aim for. St. Teresa of Lisieux was very clear about the fact that she wanted to be a saint, and she said, the way she, it sounds cocky the way she said it, I want to be a saint, a great saint. <laughs> you know, I mean, not even aiming for sanctity, but aiming for great sanctity. <laughs> like, do you know, when we think about it, often our bar is so low, does I'll scrape my way into heaven, like, Maybe you won't. <laughs> aim high. Aim high. When <clears throat> the Lord speaks uh, about knowing God, right? We, the, the quotation that we mentioned yesterday. Father, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. What's interesting is the verb that, that Jesus used. Jesus spoke Aramaic, right? The spoken version of Hebrew. So when Jesus says that they may know you, um, in English, to know, you know, I know where you live. I know that four plus four is eight, and the square root of 64 is eight as well. Uh, right? So I, I know these things, and that's information. Okay? Whereas the verb that Jesus uses is, is it's very easy to remember, Y-A-D-A, -A, yada. Right? To know, to know God. But you don't know God in the same way that you know where Joe lives or how to make a, an apple tart. Or It's a very different verb. The verb that he uses, yada, is, is to know intimately, right? It's, it's, a, it's a much, much deeper form of knowing. It's a, a deep, intimate, lifelong, life-giving, covenantal love, all in one word, right? And the reason, the way we know what those words meant is we look at where they were used elsewhere, Okay, this is the same word used, right, in Genesis, where now Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain. Right, so it's, this is the kind of knowing that we're talking about. It's remember we said it's a, a lifelong, life-giving, covenantal love. So, so to know the person isn't just I know they have blue eyes. But it's a very, very intimate and deep, lifelong, covenantal love. So in, in this, this effort that we must make, must make, uh, to become saints, <clears throat> this is what we're aiming for, this divine intimacy, right? This covenantal, life-giving love, this to, to know God, but in the form of yada, right? To know him in, in, a, in such a deep and profound sense. This is, this is our call. This is uh, the, the call of each one of us. Priest, religious, lay, man, woman, makes no difference. All of us, all of us are called to sanctity. It was something that the Second Vatican Council was very clear on as well. The universal call to sanctity. All of us are called to sanctity. Something as well that Jose Maria Escrivá 
uh, was very, very clear on as well. The universal call to sanctity, all called to sanctify their daily work, all of us. And he focused especially on lay people. Lay people, sanctify your work. You work in a mine, you work in a kitchen, you work in an office, sanctify your work. All of us called to sanctity. You know, and I think it's, it's good for us to high, have a high bar, and it's actually disastrous to lower the bar in order to keep everyone happy. That's what has been tried, that's what my generation grew up on, and when I meet young people now, many of them think that the, the faith has actually nothing to offer because it doesn't require anything of me or give me anything that I don't have already. What does the faith ask me to do? Be nice. But I'm nice already. So what does the faith offer me? Well, I mean, we have mass and things, but surely, I mean, what's important is that you have some belief, that you believe in something. So if it's not mass, that's okay too. Well, then in that case, I won't go to mass. I'll do something easier. I'll just stay at home and rest. I think rest is important for my soul too. <clears throat> so we keep lowering the bar, and it's disastrous. Whereas especially for the heart of a man, <clears throat> you tell him, like the Lord today in the gospel, uh, at the end of the day, lads, uh, the sheep and the goats are going to be separated. And the sheep are coming to me to heaven, and the goats are going to hell. That's it. Lads respond way better to that kind of talk. Lads, you come to training, you turn up on time, or you're off the panel. Right? Any complaints? There's the door. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way coaches speak. <laughs> And lads actually respond to that, as opposed to being told, look, as long as you're a good hurler in your heart, you know, as long as in here you feel like a good hurler and you've imagined yourself winning, that's all that matters. That's okay. Is that okay, lads? Is everybody feeling comfortable in the changing room? Is it too cold here? Should I warm the place? Okay. Okay. Do you, anybody need more blankets? Need more blankets here? Okay. We'll get, we'll get you more fleece blankets. Okay. Very good. All right, lads. So let's just think about running, okay? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like... I, I, not only will the teal team fail spectacularly, right? No one will actually want, no lads anyway, will want to be part of that team. It's a team of wusses. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is nothing absolute wasters. Like, do you know what I mean? Whereas, so that, and that's why good managers don't do that. Okay? So the Lord is, I mean, again, the Lord is way clearer and blunter than we often give him credit for. This is an eschatological gospel where the Lord is, tell, Lord is telling us there are consequences to the way we live. There are consequences to your choices. You are free to choose, but there are consequences. Remember Chris Stefanik said years ago, we're free to choose even sin, but we're not free to choose the consequences of our sin. Okay, you're free to choose to get hammered if you wish, but you are not free to choose the consequences that that's going to have on your family. That's out, of your, that's, that's out of your realm. You can't choose what happens to people who see you drunk or your children who are now disappointed and <clears throat> afraid because they've seen the, the, the anger and the tension in the family. You're not free to choose the effects that your sin has on others. You're free to choose to sin. Yes, you are. But you're not free to choose its effects or consequences. So, dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> one last quick point, if I may. If we're going to become saints, as John Paul II outlined to us as well, from the beginning on this spiritual journey, God's grace is essential. We will never get there without God's help. Our collaboration is necessary too. Okay, they're slightly higher. God's grace, but we have to work with him. God's grace, because God's grace is always super abundant. It's always available. It's always there. The grace of redemption is sufficient for all of mankind. Okay, but I might not want it or I might not work with it. So the question isn't, is God going to help me? Of course God's going to help you. His grace is more than sufficient. Okay. But I have to work with him. So we, we, have, we have our, our, our uh, responsibility here too. And that's why we as Catholics, we have the Eucharist. We have Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity, which we can receive. And this, look, this pandemic will pass. It will pass. Janie, I'm not going to keep talking about it. Like, it will pass, just like everything else. And when it does, we'll be able to go back to Mass, for all of you who, who haven't been able to go to Mass for a while. We can go back. We can receive the Lord. In the meantime, we can receive him spiritually. We can ask the Lord for all the graces we need to become saints, and great saints. 
that we may know him intimately, profoundly, covenantally, that he may guide us to heaven, that our blessed lady may take us by, by the hand, the Lord by the other. They may lead us to the Father. As Catholics, we lack nothing because God has given us his son and Jesus has given us his heart. So we ask the Lord today on the feast of Christ the King that he may be the shepherd of our souls, that he may guide us to sanctity and great sanctity and to our eternal home in heaven where we may hear the words of God the Father. Come, you who are, whom my Father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Amen.